the Grand Ducal family of Luxembourg attend the opening of Luxembourg Art Week, Crown Prince Haakon of Norway visits Munich, Germany, and King Philippe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain attend a glittering gala state dinner in Copenhagen. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Monday, November 6th, 2023. Their Majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, accompanied by the Spanish Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union and Cooperation, Mr. Jose Manuel Abares, and the Spanish Secretary of State for Commerce, Ms. Siana Mendez, arrived at the Adolfo Suarez Madrid Barajas Airport this morning to attend a farewell ceremony ahead of their three day state visit to the Kingdom of Denmark. The purpose of their majesties, the minister and the state secretary's visit to Denmark is to strengthen the bilateral economic relationship between the two countries in the areas of the green transition, the pharmaceutical industry, shipping, and to promote the Spanish language and culture. The last state visit from the Kingdom of Spain to the Kingdom of Denmark took place in March 1980 during the reign of their majesties King Juan Carlos I and Queen Sofia of Spain. During their three-day state visit, their majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, will be staying at Fredensborg Schlott. On the last day of their visit, per tradition, their majesties will write their names on the window glass, as many previous kings, queens, and other distinguished guests have done. At 2 p.m., their majesties, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, arrived at the Willem Lorenzen Terminal at the Copenhagen International Airport where they were warmly welcomed by Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, their Royal Highnesses Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, and Her Royal Highness Princess Benedicte of Denmark. Then the King and Her Majesty the Queen inspected the Royal Life Guards. Thereafter, Their Majesties and Her Majesty the Queen traveled by carriage, escorted by the Royal Guard Hussars Regiment's Mounted Squadron, from the Citadel to Christian VII Slot at Amelienborg, to attend an official welcoming reception. Prior to the reception, a private ceremony was held where Her Majesty, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, presented the Order of the Elephant to Their Majesties. Originating in the 15th century, the Order of the Elephant is the oldest and noblest Danish order of knights, traditionally presented to royalty and heads of state. Moreover, the Order of the Elephant is only on loan to the recipient. Once an elephant knight passes away, the order must be returned to the chapter of the order. Thus, most of the elephants have been in use several times. The concrete elephant has undergone a minor restoration where it has, amongst other things, been affixed to the queen's monogram, as an elephant always wears the sitting monarch's monogram when awarded. According to the Danish Royal Court, over 890 individuals since 1580 have received the order of the elephant. Quote, During the Queen's 40-year reign, the Order of the Elephant has been bestowed upon 68 people in all. The recipients have been royal persons and foreign heads of state. Once, the order was given to a common-born Dane, namely the recently deceased shipowner, Maersk McKinney Moller, in appreciation for his great importance to Danish economic life and Danish society. In return, Their Majesties King Philippe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain presented the Crown Prince Couple of Denmark with the Gran Cruz de la Real Orden de Isabel la Católica de España. In 1983, Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II of Denmark received the Distinguida Orden del Torison de Oro from His Majesty King Juan Carlos I of Spain during her state visit to the Kingdom of Spain. Other monarchs who received the order include the late King Rama IX of Thailand, Their Majesties Emeritus King Albert II and Emerita Queen Paula of the Belgians, and Her Royal Highness, Princess Beatrix of the Netherlands, the former Queen of the Netherlands. At 3.45 p.m., His Majesty the King held a meeting with the Prime Minister of Denmark, Ms. Mette Fredriksen, at Christiansborg Slot. In the evening, Her Majesty, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, wearing the Distinguida Orden del Toysen de Oro, hosted a lavish, glittering gala dinner at Christiansborg Slot in honor of Their Majesty's state visit. Guests in attendance included their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Frederick and Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, Her Royal Highness, Princess Benedicte of Denmark, the Prime Minister of Denmark, Ms. Mette Fredriksen, 
the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Denmark, Mr. Lars Rasmussen, members of the Danish Parliament, the Spanish Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union and Cooperation, Mr. Jose Manuel Abares, the Spanish Secretary of State for Commerce, Ms. Siana Mendez, members of Their Majesties King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia's court, representatives of Spanish and Danish businesses, representatives of culture and sport, members of Her Majesty Queen Margrethe II's court, members of the Crown Prince couple of Denmark's court, members of Princess Benedicte's court, and distinguished guests. So what was on the menu? Well, guests enjoyed souffle with vegetables, deer, cabbage and cherries from Glostein and sauce, mushroom tart and watercress, and Concord cake. And of course, a whole bunch of wine and champagne. As for the floral decorations, according to the Danish Royal Court, the Queen was inspired by the, quote, autumn forest colors. The floral decorations in Frederick VI's dessert set are arranged in light green, yellow, orange, and salmon-colored shades. Yellow drumstick flowers are matched with orange milkweed and large-headed peach-colored avalanche roses, end quote. His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Haakon of Norway, kicked off his four-day official visit to Germany this morning in beautiful Munich. According to the Norwegian Embassy, the focus of the Crown Prince's visit will be on the economy, energy, shipping, defense, and culture. In addition, the community of values between the Kingdom of Norway and the Federal Republic of Germany will be, quote, emphasized, for example, in questions of democracy, end quote. Upon his arrival at the Munich International Airport, the Crown Prince was warmly welcomed by the head of the Bavarian State Chancellery and the Bavarian Minister of State for Federal and European Affairs and the Media, Mr. Florian Hermann. Last evening, Their Majesties King Carl Gustav and Queen Sylvia of Sweden and Their Royal Highnesses Crown Princess Victoria and Prince Daniel of Sweden attended a concert at the Drottningholm Palace Chapel ahead of the Queen's 80th birthday, which is in December. Why not start early? Happy birthday! Halfway across the world, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales continued his visit to beautiful Singapore. The day began with the Prince holding a meeting with the Prime Minister of the Republic of Singapore, Mr. Lee Long, at the Astana, which means palace. Thereafter, the prince held a meeting with the president of the Republic of Singapore, Mr. Tharman. In the evening, the prince, as president of United for Wildlife, attended the United for Wildlife Summit held at the Flower Dome Gardens by the Bay. In Luxembourg City, His Royal Highness Grand Duke Henri of Luxembourg and Her Royal Highness Hereditary Grand Duchess Stephanie of Luxembourg attended the opening of the Luxembourg Art Week, held at the Tranchamp Cultural Center. During the opening, the Grand Duke and the hereditary Grand Duchess visited the Cal 2023 Salon, also known as a Luxembourg Art Circle Exhibition. According to the Cole Grand Ducal, the exhibition, quote, offers a complete panorama of Luxembourg figurative and abstract art as it appears today, composed of 150 creations by 47 Cal artists and five young helping hands. The selected works were evaluated by an international jury, which highlighted their quality and originality. Their Royal Highnesses congratulated the artists for their work, which reflects the creative and cultural wealth of the country. End quote. In Tokyo, their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Norihito and Empress Masako of Japan, held an audience with the 2023 recipients of the Order of Culture and the Person of Cultural Merit Award at the Imperial Palace. In Monacoville, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, received letters of credence from newly appointed ambassadors to the Principality of Monaco at the Palais Princier. The newly appointed ambassadors are from Japan, the Republic of Finland, the Republic of the Sudan, and the Sultanate of Brunei. And finally, last Saturday morning, His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco visited Isola Bonna 
Apercale, and Perianaldo in Northwest Italy to welcome the towns into the Sit Easter Week Grimaldi de Monaco Association. All three of these towns, along with Dolce Acqua, signed the Oath of Loyalty to the Grimaldi Dynasty 500 years ago, which was November 3, 1523. The day began in Apercale, where the Sovereign Prince unveiled the Sit Easter Week Grimaldi de Monaco sign at the entrance to the town. Thereafter, the Sovereign Prince arrived in Isola Bona, where he unveiled a commemorative plaque in the town square and visited a local church. The day ended in Perianaldo, where the Sovereign Prince welcomed the town into the Sit Easter Week Grimaldi de Monaco Association by unveiling a sign at the town's entrance. Naturally. Before returning to Monaco, the Sovereign Prince visited the Astronomical Observatory. The observatory is dedicated to Giovanni Domenico Cassini, the famous Italian astronomer who was born in Perianaldo on June 8, 1625. The Sovereign Prince also visited the Church of St. Nicholas and a local farmer's market. In case you're wondering how many Sit Historique Gamali de Monaco signs and commemorative plaques the Sovereign Prince has unveiled this past year, well... The total count is 163. Congratulations. Well done. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Tuesday, November 7th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon and a great day tomorrow. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Okay, again, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and I will see you all tomorrow.